وعلى نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده اللهم لا اله الا انت اللهم لا اله الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم استر جورينا بليز ساين اه ثانك يو يا الله in this morning in this beginning of this class with quran with your book the best of your books revealed to the best of your prophets sallallahu alaihi wasallam through the best of your angels jibril alayhi salam in the best of your lands makkah al mukarrama in the best of the months of ramadan in the best of the nights laylatul qadr we ask you ya allah to grant shifa to all our muslim brothers and sisters who are sick the mother of sister mufliha the wife of dr zul uh, sister surefa sister aisha my mother in law hajja raqiya binti muhammad shah and to all those who are not feeling well i ask allah to grant them shifa speedy recovery and to look after those who look after them without complaining without showing any kind of uh displeasure or and comfort ya allah look after those who look after the sick ones with mercy with love with rahma ya allah bless all hadirin and hadirat may allah grant shifa to the son of our sister salma allahumma shfihi wa afihi اذهب الباس رب الناس اشفي انت الشافي لا شفاء الا شفاءك شفاء لا يغادر سقما امين يا يا سيستر الله يو سي نيفر فورجيت ذات ذيس دنيا از ريلي ا هاوس اوف تيست اي مين اف يو فورجيت ذات ذن يو غونا بي سربرايز بت وين يو كيب اولويز ان مايند ذات وي ار هير تو بي تيستد والله نوت ا سينجل داي باس ويزاوت بينغ ا تيستد وان واي اور ذا اذر The problem is that we don't pay attention when Allah tests us with good. When he gives you good, he's also testing you, but you are not aware. You are aware with sickness, you are aware with poverty, you are aware with um, with uh, you know being driven away from your home, a jail, uh, loss of wealth, loss of uh, property. That you are aware that is being tested. But when Allah gives us when life is good we are also being tested it's just we don't understand mm. so that's why a mu'min like you and me inshallah lives between sisters between what shukr and sabr shukr and sabr when allah gives you good things you shukur you should not forget that and when allah tests you you sabr shukr and sabr until you meet allah yeah I say this because I just received Subhanallah this morning so many news about people sick and cancer not just one not just two I've been I've been, I've been making Subhanallah until I arrived do, 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 what's happening Yeah sabar my sisters and brothers may Allah grant sabar to all of you and shifa to your loved ones Yeah Okay any question before we start anyone has question quick where do we start don't worry don't worry we, where no in the quran uh, surah ali imran surah ali imran yeah 71 qira 71 yeah verse 158 the reading but the tafsir we go back a little bit so let's read first any question before we start one or two questions quick wa alaikum assalam wa alaikum assalam ahlan wa sahlan welcome 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 wa alaikum assalam sit wherever you want there here Huh? Okay. Any question? Zoomers. Ask, don't be shy. Somebody will benefit from your question and you have double reward. 
Okay, uh, my question is um, for Salat uh, Duha. Um, uh, okay, see, for example, um, I'm in the office, and the minute I arrive, I Salat uh, to Rakat, then after that, I've got a meeting. Then, once when it ends, uh, it's a tea break time. So, I continue. Can I do another two Rakat of uh, Duha? Which means oh. my Duha is separated, like. You know, can, can I address the question? I'm, I'm in doubt whether I can do that or I must Excellent. perform for... Very good question. Yeah, Very good start. question. Okay. When you. I go to office, hold on, stay with me. Stay with ah, me. Okay. When I go to office and I pray to Rak'az before I start my meeting, can I pray another to Rak'az after the meeting as long as the time of Doha is still there? Is that your question? Yes, yes. That's my okay. question. Number one. You see, before I answer that question, I have to ask you. Fatwa, uh, it's not only one way, so it's double way. Mufti, before he gives an answer, he has to clarify first. Number one, do you work for yourself or you work for someone? I work for someone. Ah, uh, Then you have to take permission. Yes, I've already asked permission. Very good. And uh, not, not just you, I'm saying to all my students here so that they know. When you work for someone, you must take permission for the sunnah. If you want to pray sunnah, you take permission. Doha is a sunnah. You understand? It's like a guard at night. I'm a guard at night in somebody's property. I cannot go pray uh, Qiyamun Layl until I take permission from him or her. Because I work for them. Ah, but for the five daily prayers, don't take permission from anyone. So, Bohdor, Asr, Maghrib, and Isha, you have to do them and it has to be agreed upon. Okay? All right. I mean, before you take the job, you tell the person, my Jumu'ah, my five daily prayers. This is my condition. Number two, let's say your boss gives you, alhamdulillah, permission. You, you, you pray. Yes, in this case, you can. You can pray, if you rak'az, go to the meeting. Finish it and then come back for more prayers before 11.30. Before 11.30 a.m. Because by 11.30, the noon, the noon time starts. Here in Malaysia, they say up to noon, up to 12. To be safe, slash half an hour. So that you don't enter Maso Zohor time. Yeah? Is this clear? Inshallah. Very good. Thank you for Thank the you. question. What else? Can to continue with this question, Sheikh, can I ask? Okay. Yes, continuation yes. with... Is it with, continuation too? Okay. Continuation with the same question. Mm. Um, say, if, if, uh, like, watch prayers, we can do, like, for example, Zoho. It's time to pray, you pray, right? Zoho prayers. So can you do the Bhaktia and uh, the Sunnah ones? Do you have to ask permission for the Sunnah? Four sunnah before Zohar and two no. after Zohar. No, no, because you went for the time of Zohar. Very good. If I am going for Zohar, should I also ask for the permission of the Qabliya and Ba'diya? No, because that's a package. Huh? But Doha, there is no Salat near Doha. Fajr is before Doha. Zohar is after Doha. That's what I meant. But when you go to pray Zohar or Asr or can I pray also Tahiyat al-Masjid or should I take permission? No, in this case, no. No, this is a case when the, the, the sisters pray in the office and it's office hours. Can she take the extra few minutes to do? Yes, yes, within a reasonable time. Yeah, some of you, mashallah, qiyamun layl and doha during work. What is this? You're running away from work. Akbir? You never take time when you are in a party, you take long time Surat al-Baqarah because uh, you want to join the fun. Yeah? Not you, Ummu Adam. I'm just saying to everyone. My sister, Hamida. Mm. No, no, no. Very good. Some Ustaz, sister said, advise her that you can do Doha uh, as long as before Doha. No. No, that's not the sunnah of Rasulullah. Doha is Doha, 
قبلية أو ظهر قبلية بعدية أو ظهر بعدية صلاة الأوابين is right after المغرب no no everything has a time yeah شكرا. so from the sunrise until 11:30 right before the sun becomes on top of your head this is called duha glorious morning glorious morning very good yes you are, you are, yeah. um related to, yeah related to duha share i just want to confirm with you uh solat sunat isra is that some people say it's early duha is that a a, a strong dalil nas for it share? yeah i mean there is no salat called ishraq however mm. if people wants to call it salat or ishraq let it be but the prophet didn't call it salat al-ishraq right so, it's the early duha early duha right after sun rises and you pray two rak'ahs or four or six or up to 12 mm. it's called but it's two rak'ahs actually two rak'ahs you pray two rak'ahs and then you want to do your duha do your duha okay. but it is early duha and duha yeah. is 23 minutes after after uh shuru, right uh, uh, of course those days they didn't have uh, watches and this imam malik said if the sun rises above your spear hmm. those days they had spears spear war stick so if it, like a meter and a half one meter and a half above your head when you look at the horizon the sun is above your head now the time has come hmm. Yeah, in case you don't have watch or, yeah. But in terms of time now, it's about half an hour, right? After sure. About mm, approximately 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, you can pray. Okay. May Allah bless you. Okay. Another one quick question, Shay. Sorry. Another one quick, quick question. Quick, quick. Related to the hadith that we had learned earlier on, mm -hmm. the reward of a convert, uh, hadith 39. 10 to 700 times more than a non-convert for each good deeds. Is that at the initial phase of them converting or is that throughout their life, Sheikh? I, I never said this hadith. I never. Yeah, we learned that last week. Um, it's With in... me? Yes, yes. Our hadith class. That the reward gets 700? Uh, this is for a, a person who embraced Islam sincerely. Yeah, but not me. I think what another ustaz. No, no, no. It's I, I will I will text to you the hadith. We we learned that last week. In if the summarized summarized Buhari uh, class. Do you see me in dreams also teaching you in dreams? No, it's the hadith thirty nine, Shay. Hadith thirty nine of what Buhari? Buhari, Buhari, the summarized Buhari. You know what, Sister Intan, get me one Buhari from there. There, there. Those uh, yes, the big ones. It's okay, yeah. Thank you. Hadith 39. Let me see, maybe. Just what I'm going to say. Thank you, sister. Thank you. 39. Yeah, chapter 28, Shay. Chapter, what page? What page? Uh, page 71. 71. Okay. Uh, one is said regarding the superiority of a person who embraces Islam sincerely. Yeah, but I didn't uh, read that hadith with you. Mm. I didn't read this hadith. I think you read it on your own. Yeah, I read okay. it on my own. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, it we... is, yeah. Okay, yeah. what is said regarding the superiority of a person who embraces Islam sincerely? Okay, what is it? The yeah. hadith of 700. When a, when a person does one good deed, Allah counts it 700. Yes, yes. Okay, so let me read the hadith, then everybody knows what we're talking about. Yeah. Narrated Abu Sa'id al Khudri radiallahu anhu, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, If a person embraces Islam sincerely, then Allah shall give him, shall give all his, shall yes. forgive all his past sins, ah. and after that starts the settlement of accounts. The reward of his good deeds will be 10 times to 700 times for each good deed and an evil deed will be recorded as it is unless Allah forgives it. Okay, so what's the question? The question uh, is, does this refer to reverts, Sheikh? Not only reverts. Uh, yeah, but he was, here he is encouraging people to embrace Islam. Uh -huh. so he's telling them, 
There is hope, embrace Islam, but it's not just for them. Because Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah mentions 700 in Surah Al-Baqarah. مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ For us, is in sadaqa. For the reverts in embracing Islam. So for you and me, when we donate one ringgit, for Allah, you donated 700. Right there. This is why you should always give. Because we are Muslims, so Allah wants to give us, He wants to promote us from just Islam to now donating sadaqat and amal sadiq. For them, he is telling them, come, masu Islam. Masu Islam. So Allah will, all your good deeds will be 700. Plus, all your sins will be recorded one. And if you repent, it's not even recorded. So he's encouraging them. Yeah, but very good. We did, I didn't read this hadith uh, last week, but that's why I'm, I know what I read. Within a week or two, I know. Okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you skip this hadith. Yeah, but uh, good that you read that hadith. Yes. I read it because I missed this class, so I read it on my own. Wonderful. So. Wonderful. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Yalla, now everybody, page 71. Let's recite one page together, inshallah, so that we get the rahma of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem. Abima Rahmatim Minallahi Lin Talahum Abima Rahmatim Minallahi Lahum Walau Kun Tafawan Gali Wal Kolbilam Fabu Min Haulik Wala <laughs> فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَكِّلِينَ <laughs> no problem. Sarawak just arrived. Back there. <laughs> Why وَمَا كَانَ لِنَبِيٍّ أَنْ يَغُلْ وَمَا كَانَ لِنَبِيٍّ يَغُلْ أَنْ يَغُلْ وَمَنْ 
ثم توفى كل نفس ما كسبت وهم لا يظلمون ثم توفى كل نفس ما كسبت وهم لا يظلمون أفمن اتبع رضوان الله كمن باء بسخط من الله أفمن اتبع رضوان الله كمن باء بسخط من الله بسخط من الله ومأواه جهنم بسخط من الله ومأواه جهنم وبئس المصير وبئس المصير هم درجات عند الله والله بصير بما يعملون لقد من الله على المؤمنين إذ بعث فيهم رسولا من أنفسهم لقد لقد نعمد المؤمنين إذ بعث فيهم رسولا من أنفسهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب يمهم الكتاب والحكمة وإن كانوا من قبل لا في ضلال مبين. أولما أصابتكم مصيبة قد أصبتم مثليها أولما أصابتكم مصيبة قد أصبتم مثليها قد أصبتم مثليها ليها قلتم أن هذا قد أصبتم قل هو من عند أنفسكم قل هو من عند أنفسكم إن الله على كل شيء قدير. إن الله على كل شيء قدير. Excellent. May Allah bless you all. Amin. Amin. Can I just ask really quickly? Sure. Ah, the ah in verse. Where is it? That we came across the the word Jahannam. Mm -hmm. So uh, I know you said we're supposed to. Uh, it's um, verse one six two. Um, I know we're supposed to read uh, some kind of du'a. 
So sometimes what I do is I read uh, Na'udhu Billah or I read um, Allahumma Ajirna Minan Nar. But is there well, like... No, correct. That's it. That's it? Yes. That's no longer doa that Rasulullah SAW read. No, no. Okay. Very good. During the Quran, when you hear an ayah of, when you come to an ayah of uh, punishment, especially Jahannam, Annar, Jahannam, this and that, Na'udhu Billah, you should say, A'udhu Billah. A'udhu Billahi Minan Nar. Allahumma ajirni min Allah. That's the least, huh? But not when we are reading together. Otherwise, uh, like me here. Yeah, when you are on your own. Very good. Rasulullah, when he used to recite, he used to pause. So the Sahaba asked him, Rasool, Ya Rasulullah, why? He said that was an ayah of Jahannam. I ask Allah forgiveness, uh, uh, safety. Uh, an ayah of Jannah, he asked Allah for Jannah. Yeah. Live with the Quran. Mm. We have to live with it. Mm. Amen. Amen. Okay, everybody back to verse where you mahis Allahu ladina amanu wa yahakal kafirin, right? 141. Tafsir, where did we stop? Yes. Okay. yes. 141, everyone. Why does Allah give us tests? Good question. We the Muslims, we believe in Allah, we pray, we fast. Sheikh, the moment I start wearing hijab, the moment I started attending classes, the more I started going to Umrah, praying, this more problems came. Congratulations. Tahniya. You do uh, go through that? Alhamdulillah. Then you are like Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa Let's see Rasulullah's life when he was just a normal human being. From the day he was born until 40. Did he have any major problem with people? Zero. He never had a problem, an issue. Do you know that? The Prophet had never had an issue with anyone. From 40 until he died, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's the real test, where people become headache. Real. When, when people start becoming, going after you. When you lose a, a sheep and you go find it or the wolf eat it, that's not a big test. But somebody slanders you. Somebody lies against you. That is, you are a sadiq al-amin, they call you liar. Why? Because he told them something they don't like to hear anymore. That's how people are. You're the best, as long as you don't tell people what to do. If you are good to yourself, you are the best. Everybody respects you, all the neighbors. Start telling their children, don't do this, don't do all this. Why? Because you are no more good to yourself. You are good to others. You're trying to make others change and they, people don't like that. Okay? So Rasul, all the same thing for you. The moment you start changing yourself, shaitan doesn't like it. You start attending classes, you start problems start coming. But that's a sign that Allah has accepted you. Really. Sahaba used to be very scared if there is no test. For six, seven months, if no one of them gets sick, they panic and they go to Rasulullah. Ask, ya Rasulullah, I didn't even get sick for us. What's wrong with me? I have headache. Ah, so my sisters and brothers, the sign that Allah has accepted you is test after test. Remember that, please. And don't say, what, what did I do to deserve all this? Don't, don't say that. Say, Ya Rabbi, forgive me if I have upset you with any sin. That's all. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa Is this clear, my sisters? So here is Allah testing, uh, telling us verse 140, 141. We stopped at 140. I want to go back to 140. So I asked Sister uh, Jeannie, since he is on my right hand side, MashaAllah, 140, 141. Look at the test, how it is related to Iman. Look at it. If, if a wound and healing has touched you, be sure a solution will come and so are the days, good and not so good. 
we give to men by turns that Allah may set those who believe and that we may take matters from among you. And Allah likes not the Dalimu, Polygis, and wrong words. I get the same. Yeah, yeah, I know. MashaAllah. So, so, subhanAllah, as if Allah is telling you something. Yeah. I don't, subhanAllah. Now, now you told me, yeah, it came back. Did you see? And look what she said. Um, among all the seats. <laughs> Lucky she didn't sit here. <laughs> Teaching you. <laughs> one for one. Okay. And that Allah may test or purify the believers from sins and destroy the disbelievers. Here is your answer, Sister Salma. Yeah. You see? Sister Salma also, may Allah bless her in the morning when she came, she asked this question. She had to make dua. Huh. Allah is going to raise and purify you because you are a believer. If you are kafir, he's punishing you. I you are... When I was reading the Quran last night, mm. uh, Fussilat. 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 Okay. And then suddenly I came on the word Quran is guidance uh, and healing. Allahu Akbar. Here you go. Quran. And that is the Ruqya. The question about Rukia. Okay. For those who don't know what I'm talking about, pretend you know. Bismillah. If something bad happens to you while you are doing jihad, killing, martyrdom, injuries, this and that, or something bad happens to you, all Muslims, the same thing is happening to non-Muslims. But Allah will reward you and he will not reward them. Here is where the difference is. Muslims or non-Muslims are going to be tested. In this dunya, everyone... Have you seen non-Muslims without cancer? I've seen Muslims and non-Muslims. I've seen non-Muslims and Muslims burned. I've seen Muslims and Muslims. Hujan Banjir. Hujan Labbad Banjir. So Allah said, I will test you in this dunya. But the difference is, you are believers in Allah. He will reward you. They are not, sorry, too bad. So you see what's the difference? The difference is Iman, not test. Test must. If you are creation of Allah, Allah will test you. And we are, right? But what, what, what's the difference? Iman. I cannot change the fact that Allah will test me somehow. But I can accept riba. So that's Iman. Or get upset. Yeah, Allah, be sour and we will see what you can do. Nothing. So Rida and Allah will reward you. Huh? Because in Badr they won. In Uhud they were defeated. This ayah came about Uhud. O Muslims. The next verses coming is all about Uhud. If you have been defeated in Uhud, it's normal. Because you disobey the Prophet. Lucky you didn't all die. Like the Muslims of today. Look at us. Sin after sin. Lucky Allah is still ah, ah, because of his mercy. Otherwise he will wipe us all. You go eat the property of an ayatim. Are you out of your mind? You kill innocent civilians. You rape children. Hit your mom. Put in all the homes. Lucky Allah is, didn't wipe us yet. May Allah save us. Serious, serious, brothers, sisters. It's a big problem. You allow anyone to do anything in your backyard? Yalla, let someone come and put on your wall or on your door. What do you call that? Graffiti. Graffiti. That's what we are doing in the kingdom of Allah. Sin here, sin there, sin here, sin there. Yet he's so merciful, patient. And he, telling us, come to me, I forgive you. And once you die, bye-bye. That's it. Okay, that's what is bothering me. You know, in previous uh, prophets, um, a nation you know, commit one major sin. Bye-bye. And yet, I'm going to you know, I don't 
Is it true? Very good. And yet here now, before me, all the seas. And yeah, you know why? Very good. Good question. Sheikh, we observe the Quran. The people of Nuh wiped out. The people of Hud, alayhi salam, wiped out. The people of Saleh wiped out. The people of Lut wiped out. Everybody, bunkos, bunkos, go, go, go. All of them, without exception. For us, we, we do all their sins, and he still leaves us. You know why? Because Rasulullah s.a.w. said. After the Prophet came, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We haven't sent you, O Muhammad, except as a mercy to mankind. Since he came, the capital punishment stopped. If the Prophet says, didn't come, and we, we do these sins, Ya Allah. So the, the good thing is that Islam has been perfected. There are still some good Muslims living with us. Otherwise, Allah will wipe us. In one hadith, the Prophet said, لَوْلَ الشُّيُوخُ الرُّكَّعَ وَالْأَطْفَالُ الرُّدَّعَ وَالْبَهَائِمُ الرُّدَّعَ Three, had it not been for the elderly who are making ruku and sujood, had it not been for the babies who are innocent, had it not been for the animals that are just, you know, animals, they, they, they have done nothing wrong. The Prophet said, مَا سَقَ اللَّهُ كَافِرًا شَرْبَةً Allah wouldn't send a, a drop of rain. Because of this tree, we are okay. That's why we need really to respect the elders. We need to show so much rahmah to the children who are not yet baligh, especially babies, and animals that because of them, Allah is giving. They are innocent. They are ghair uh, mukallaf. Yes, my sisters and brothers, a lot of sins. And I'm talking about Muslims, kafirs, whatever they want to do, they are already kafir. Come see the Muslims, what they are doing. Terrible things. Terrible things. In mu'amalat, especially in mu'amalat. In ibadat, we all look uh, like angels. Yeah. Okay. So why Allah does that? Look why he said. And so are the days Good and not so good. The days are like that. A day is good, one day is not good. For both Muslims and non-Muslims. That we give to man by turns. That Allah may test those who believe. You see? It's all about test. A good day, bad day. Allah is testing you. Huh? And that he may take martyrs amongst you. You know why Allah gives us those tests of killing and this? He wants to select, like he selected prophets, he selects martyrs. May Allah make us amongst them. How many times are you going to die, sisters? One. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, then ask, ask Allah to make it for, yours, for his sake. Since you're going to die only one time, right? Don't miss the chance to say, Ya Rab, when my death comes, make it according to your wish, to your will. And to the Sunnah of Rasulullah. Husn al Khatima. Yeah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Welcome, welcome, sister. Is this clear, my brothers and sisters? Yes. We die only one time. Don't worry. All of us have one birthday and one death day. One BD, one DD. Huh. And you know, the only document you can never see is death day. I see birth certificate, passport, you all can have now. Someone will carry yours. We'll go to municipality or JPJ and get it. JPJ, no JPJ, the other one. JPJ, I want all of you, JP, JP. Takbir, you confuse me. Hmm. That's the only document you really don't know when. SubhanAllah. Yeah? So, may Allah give us a death that pleases him. Amen. Amen, Ya Rab. It's coming, it's coming, but we, we just say, Ya Rab, when it is time, just be pleased with us. Amen. So, he, he, Allah says, when I give you tests, I, like people who die with cancer, like Sister Munira, may Allah have mercy. Allah says, Allah selected that. For sure. No doubt about it. So, uh, death is not only in jihad. 
A lady delivering baby. Your mom maybe died like that. She died shaheen. She will go straight to paradise. Somebody defending his property and children and honor. People kill him. Robbers or uh, burglars. He goes to paradise. Sheikh Gurusam. He went to paradise. Think about how you died. Shahid fighting in Palestine and the Rohingya. These people will go to Jannah straight. Huh? So the Sahaba who died in Badr and Uhud, Allah says, I have taken them as Shahid. Hamza died. Hamza, the uncle of the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wallahu la yuhibbu zalimin. And Allah doesn't like on a Meaning fight them. Don't be afraid. Because Allah doesn't like them. You are fighting someone Allah doesn't like. So Allah is on your side. Because they are zalim. Huh? Quraysh were zalim at that time. Today you know who are the zalim. Then 141. And that Allah, this is why Allah gave us bad days, a good day, bad day, good day. So that he test us and take some of us as shaheed. Because tests can reach to death. Sisters, your test and my test are nothing compared to some people. You know what they have done to some people. If I tell you what they have done, you'll be crying right now. When they bring the, his mom in front of him and do terrible things to his mom. Like Ammar bin Yasir, radiallahu anhu. They brought his dad and mom and start strangling them. Old man and old woman. Give up on Muhammad or we kill your mom. And they did terrible things to her that I can't say here because most of you are women. They strangled his father in front of him. You see your father's eyes popping in front of you. That's very painful. That's emotional and physical torture. You know, some physical torture people can't tahan. Yeah, but your mom, your sister, they bring your daughter in front of you. You have to know what people went through to bring this deen to you and me. Still, some of you find it difficult to attend the true Zoom. What's wrong with us? Huh? What do you, and then another thing, what do you mahis, filter? Allah says, and he may test and purify the believers. Some his, who is better than the other one? Even among the believers, who is who? Ayyukum ahsanu? Amala. Surah Al-Mulk. Tabarak alladhi biyadihi al-mulk wa huwa ala kudhi shayin qadir. Alladhi khalaq al-mawt al-hayata liyabluwakum. Ayyukum ahsanu amala. In my students, there are those, mashallah, who are A-plus students. There are those, alhamdulillah, the worst amongst them is B. Takbir. That's the worst. Takbir. And why B? Because they sleep. <laughs> if they don't sleep, A. Takmir. Multitasking. Multitasking also. Talking here, talking there, cooking. Even cooking from my class. <laughs> Did you check the cake in the oven? Takmir. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. May Allah bless all my sisters. Because and I am amazed how multitasking, multitasking you are. Brothers, if they are watching TV, it's only watching TV. I can't hear anything else. Ladies are Allah Akbar. And somehow they get it. I don't understand. So purify from what, sisters? From sin. What would happen to your beautiful white cloth that is on you if you keep wearing it for many days? And then smelly. Dirty and smelly. Well, you forget smelling? Okay. Not only it looks a little bit not, not clean as, anymore, but stop. same thing, the soul. The soul smells. Smells. In the spiritual world, for example, when you are so bitter, it, it, it's clear. It's clear on you. When you go crazy and start backbiting, collecting people, ta -ta 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 -ta, what does that mean? For what? 
for for qada and qadar you you fight allah are you out of your mind allah decided something to go not your way خلاص لله تعالى leave it allah may give you something better no be careful sisters hasad and this and that خلاص so allah will test the believers also like in badr uh, in uhud The Sahaba came down, those 70 archers. Only three or four stayed. That's Tamhis, you failed. The others who were fighting on the ground, brothers, you're supposed to protect our back. It's no less than fighting with us. Protecting me is no less than Sheikh Zuber is teaching and somebody is supporting me to teach. Same reward. Oh. Sheikh Zuber is doing da'wah. Someone somehow is helping. May Allah help him or her or them. The same as if there were 60, 70 Sheikh Zubair teaching. This is something, you ladies, do you know how much reward you have when you support your husbands? Sometimes the pilot himself makes a mistake. Who, who, who reminds him, corrects him? Co the co-pilot. You think the job of co-pilot is easy? He has to watch the plane and he has to watch the sleeping pilot. <laughs> Get up, man. We're going to India instead of Malaysia. Yeah? So women are very important human beings in society. Why Allah also tested these believers? To destroy them. Wallahi al-Adim is true. He is destroying them. But they don't understand. They don't see it. When Allah tests them, he's destroying them. When Allah is testing you, he's not, uh, he's not destroying you. He's purifying you. That's the difference. Yeah? So I was talking about clothes. Need to be washed from time to time. That washing is a test. Have you seen when we wash the clothes? What do we do? Scrub them and boom, boom, even the machine turns them. Boom, 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 boom. Did you see? Yeah. It's not easy. It's not like please get clean even when you iron them you have to burn them you burn the cloth too look did you see that yes huh. so you want to look good allah will test you your uh, you cook something and still sticking there what do you do scrub it and sometimes you have to bring that harsh i don't know what what do you call that whatever that thing Harsh uh, brush, or I don't know what. Ah, uh, to remove the dirt. That's how. Oh, I got it. Like physical, like spiritual. Ah, very good. Hajja Hamida. 142, 143. <laughs> Ah, here it is. Allah said, do you think you will enter Jannah for free? How many times you heard me saying this? Here it is, here it is. Many times I always tell you, Jannah is not cheap, sisters. Just go and go buy any expensive car. Just buy, pass by. And you know what? One day I will do this. I go to a very expensive car dealer. I just say, I want that car. So they said, okay, sir, come pay. I said, no, no, I want it free. <laughs> they will say, sir, we don't have time for. I said, no, I really want it free. Give it to me. Can you drive it out? <laughs> If they don't call the police, they will call the Tanjung. Uh, what is that? Rambutan. Why? You didn't even say a Maivi. You want that? I don't know what Bentley. Just because your name Bushiki Bentley. Takbir. <laughs> Takbir. It fits perfect for me, right? Huh? People, okay, you pass by Habib Jeweler. It's not even a ring. You want that? I don't know what. 
And when they say, okay, ma'am, you would you like to pay cash? Or okay, the cops said, no, I just want it. You know, they'd be like, ooh, they'd be steaming. You want to go to Jannah, Jannah forever, pleasure. It's not just, you know, for, for nothing. Allah said, I will test you. That's the price. The price of Jannah is test. So, wallahi, when you and I go through test, Allah is just, we are paying in advance for Jannah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's all. So, or do you think that you will enter paradise before Allah tests those of you who fought in his cause and test those who are sabirun? He wants to see who is uh, mujahid and who is patient. Then you enter Jannah. Not before that. And indeed, you used to long to death. You, you were saying, I wish martyrdom comes. Here it is. Here is jihad has come. All of us say, I wish to die shaheed. Here is the, like the Jews, they told Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, Bani Israel, they said, uh, uh, if, if only qital is written on us. When Talut, Saul alayhi salam, told them, okay, uh, Talut is your prophet, king, follow him. To fight Goliath, uh, they all chicken out. See, in reality, mm, like some of us say, if only, if only I can help, Sheikh. If uh, anything, I, okay, now we need help. Where are you? Never see again. You see, so Allah is saying, do not think you go, you are going to be given Jannah just like that with wishes. Because that's the problem of Bani Israel. They just wish. Allah said, I will test you. You have to be patient. And sisters, one thing to help you really suffer. A lot of brothers ask me, Sheikh, how can I really suffer when tests come? Remember this, that your test has an end. Expiration date. Either through death or Allah will get you out of that. Either death comes and that's it. You don't suffer anymore. Like Sister Munira, may Allah have mercy. Either Allah was given, going to give her shifa and she recover 100%, or she cannot keep suffering more than seven years, guys. It's not easy. Seven years, my wife, with fighting day by day. I, I, I was not just telling you. Daily pain. Seven years old. That's mashallah. So what I'm saying, why I'm bringing Sister Munira, because alhamdulillah, most of you know her. And... Uh, a, a personal issue. So that's you, Sabar, too. Okay? Because we all go through. Yeah? The Prophet, okay, Prophet Ayyub, Prophet, God's sake. And sisters, bones, you see the bones. You see through, meaning wounds open. Have you seen when you slaughter the sheep and then you open, you see the bone like that? And the life, at least the sheep or the, the cow is dead. You know what does that mean? Huh. So suburb. At the end, Allah got him out through cure. Others die. So there is end. What will suburb you, what will give you a lot of suburb, inshallah, is that fact that it's going to end one day. Either Allah guides the people who are giving you hard time or take them away. If people are giving you hard time. If you are sick, either Allah will bring death or will give you cure. But don't worry. You will not go beyond what you can tahan. This iman, this knowledge will help you to suffer. Huh? But if you think Allah is, you know, unfair to you, billah, then you are. Yom al-Qiyamah, sisters, hadith, Rasulullah Sassim says, the people of test are the only people who wish to go back to dunya. Those who have been tested too much. Why? They will be so amazed at how much re reward Allah gives them. So they are the people who say, Arab, can you send us back to dunya, create another dunya and test us more? Now we see. When they were in dunya, they were like, oh, too much. Does, eh? 
Now, when they see what Allah prepared for them, and on a, on a, on a funny note, I want to tell you uh, an incident where Rasulullah really laughed so much. Are you ready? Really laughed from his heart until his last teeth, molars, were seen. Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu in, in Sahih Bukhari says the Prophet told us on the day of judgment, Allah brings you and me, people. And he says to the malaika, hide their major sins. Don't show the major sins. Just bring them. And then he says, oh, my slave, let's say he's talking to a uh, genie. And he tells her, did you do this and this and this? Minor. He shows her, showing her only minus. She says, yes, ya Allah. Because you cannot lie. One thing, in, lie now as much as you can. <laughs> when you lie. <laughs> You cannot lie. And then you say, Ya Rab, yes, yes. And then we wish that the major sins, takut, we're takut. Oh, already all the minor sins, yes, I did that, I did that. So he said, Allah says to the malaika, look, change her uh, minor sins into good deeds. At that time, say, Ya Rab, I have other sins I have done. Then the Prophet Sassam laughed. He laughed. And the Sahaba were so happy to see him laughing. You got it or not? Now you want to expose yourself because Allah turned your minor sins into good deeds. Now you want to say, I have done this. Oh, nah. What changed you? The Rahmah of Allah. So he's not just going to forgive you. He's going to turn your sins into good deeds because you are patient. Ooh. Yes. And do you know how important this lecture, if I said it to, to Americans or reverts, you don't feel it because you are Muslim, because they think of suicide. You and me, alhamdulillah, no matter what happened to us, blah, blah, blah. Them, they contemplate any bad things in their mind. So when they hear this, they even appreciate more. Yeah? Okay. So Allah says, do you think you're going to go to Jannah without being tested, without being uh, given jihad, without being sabar? And then he said, why you were saying we want to die shaheed and now jihad has come to you? Yalla. Here is your chance. If you are sadiq, if you are truthful. 143, uh, 144, 145. My sister. MashaAllah. For God. <laughs> Face never forget. Isa, Isa. Face never forget. Hey, name, even my daughters, I forget them. One day, may Allah have mercy on me. I called Sister Munira. Abu, you want to clap? Are you talking to your husband or your daughter? <laughs> Okay, I called Sister Munira, may Allah have mercy on her, something else. Someone else. Why yeah, else? someone else, oh. female. Oh. She knows, he just laughed. <laughs> One day I forgot her, may Allah forgive me. I took them with me, <laughs> wedding, I went home. <laughs> I performed the nikah because they always sit by themselves. I went home. Then she called. I said, I'm near the house. I am nearby. Uh, next exit, I am. She said, we, Sheikh Zubair, we were with you in the wedding. We are in hotel so and so. You know, we'll make you turn. <laughs> Imagine. Busy. That's why. Sabar with me, sister. Ah, lucky I don't forget. Eza. Eza. Yal. Yes. Today, bonus. Two ayahs per, per student. Hadirena, Zoomers, uh, just listen. Takbir. One way to call them, to bring them. <laughs> no fair here, no fair. I know. Fair and square. Takbir. Your so, sister, so, mashallah, come here. We are working here. Come. Come in the mu'minina wal mu'minat. 
Yeah. Multitasking siya. Masha Allah, Masha Allah. May Allah bless you. Singapore, I wish I can just fly over. I know. Very good. Since this I is quite long, let me take it first. Wama Muhammad. Here is one of the three ayahs in the Quran where the name Muhammad is mentioned. Only three times the name Muhammad was mentioned, and the fourth is Ahmad. So four times total, Muhammad, 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 and then Ahmad, but not talking to him. Pay attention. Allah never called Muhammad by his name. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He talk about him. When he talks about him, he mentions his name. When he talks to him, he mentions his title. Yes. Like you, when you address your husband, you shouldn't call him by his name. But when you talk about him, say Ahmad, Sulaiman, Roslan, Abdul Halim. You know what I mean? But when you address your husband out of respect, you should call him whatever. Sayang, my charming, Prince Charming. Don't call him Shrek. Takbir. Takbir. Ah, okay. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Adab, Adab with husband. Same thing, wife. I talk about her, mention the name. But address her, mashallah, nice. Father and mother, title, whether you talk about them or to them. Oh, very important. Okay. So, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرَّسُولُ And indeed, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is no more than a messenger. And indeed, many messengers have passed away before him. What, what does this mean? Actually, it's psychological preparation for the Sahaba to let go of the idea. Because sometimes, you know, we love someone so much, we forget that he will die. And when death comes, we are panicking. Like Umar. Umar panicked, radiallahu anhu. Umar, Umar said, whoever says Muhammad sallallahu died, I chopped his, his hand or his leg. He couldn't accept it out of too much love. Abu Bakr was the only man who, who, who was deeply hurt, yet he tahan. You know, he, he, he realized that, that only Allah doesn't die. That is not easy, sisters. That is not easy. Like, uh, God forbid, the death of our children. We are all psychologically ready for who? For elders. But young or chuchu, we, we panic because we still think yeah, the, future, the future ahead of them, right? So how, how would you remind yourself of what happens? Out of, please understand, he can have like 100 and he lost six. Out of seven, he lost six.
ماش ليتر ليتر تل مي وات از ماش لك دير ما شاء الله نو جود ليت مي نو بيكوز اي اي دونت نو ذيس ثينجز اه وي ار باك اي لوست يو فور وايل دونت وري اي واز اي واز ويتينج دونت وري سو يا ذاتس بريفيليج اولسو اوف اتندينج فيزيكلي تكبير الحمد لله uh, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam Allah says is a messenger like other messengers who died before him so it's a preparation psychological preparation for sahaba that one day the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam will die too okay good look at it if he dies or is killed so there are two possibilities either he will be assassinated or he will die a normal death one of them is coming will you then turn back on your heels will you then become murtad that is the problem of many of us who follow the person instead of following the idea if you follow islam you will always mashallah excel but if you follow people you may be disappointed or that person dies lillahi ta'ala he goes khalas then what give up everything mm. So this is very important, my sisters and brothers. This idea of uh, following Quran, following Islam, following the Sunnah of Rasulullah. The Prophet may die, but the Sunnah will never die. So learn, learn no matter what, huh? and he who turns back on his heels not the least will harm allah he will not do any harm to allah he will do harm to himself if you leave islam because the prophet sallam died like the like the murtad abu bakr siddiq had two major problems may allah be pleased with him when he became caliph sisters a huge number of people left islam and bigger number of people stopped paying zakat he had to fight them and kill them both the sahaba agreed to fight the murtad but they said how can we kill the people who just don't want to pay zakat they didn't see the hikmah umar was one of them abu bakr looked at him and he said wallahi la uqatilanna man farraqa bayna as-salati wa zakat by allah i will fight even if i am lonely those who differentiate between salat and zakat umar you were powerful in jahiliya you are coward in islam umar you know don't say that to umar he said then i saw the hikmah because if people break one pillar of islam yalla table table break one one uh, one pillar of the table does it stand this building this building god forbid go remove only one pillar break one pillar wallahi it will fall one pillar please understand so abu bakr was very swift although very soft umar was tough but at times he couldn't get it then he realized oh because people will not stop if they give up zakat one day they will give up on fasting if they give up on fasting they will give up on hajj if they give up they will give up on salat and bye bye islam where is islam you see he said those who, who do not give the pillars of islam are not muslims which is true which is very true so and allah will give reward to those who are grateful wala yajjanna Allah Azza wa Jal said, وَسَيَجْزِ الشَّاكِرِينَ وَسَيَجْزِ اللَّهُ الشَّاكِرِينَ Quran bur shukur, Allah will reward them. Do not turn away from Islam. Yeah? Do not turn away from classes. What's wrong with some sisters? Huh? The Sahaba loved Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so much. Look what happened. They changed. They followed him to Medina. Do you know one of the most difficult things you change your comfort zone you got it or not 
This Sahaba, they loved him so much. Did you see yesterday the Sahabi who was blind, the Hadith? He was blind. They said to him, he said, Wallahi, I was making dua for Allah to fix my sight. But now since the Prophet ﷺ died, I don't want. Why? He said, all I wanted to see Rasulullah. Since he died, I don't want. Look how much love they had to Rasulullah. They had to change their address from zip code Mecca to zip code Medina because he moved to Medina. Allahu Akbar. Okay. Continue, my sister, Isa. So, oh, Shay, uh, Shay, before yes. we continue, uh, it's a bit out of topic, but because you mentioned uh, Omar and um, Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu. anhu. Um, so, my question is, uh, we can see that, um, you know, Abu Bakr and Omar, radiallahu anhu, they advised each other, right? I mean, mm. one had some strengths and one had some weaknesses. So they complemented each other. They complement, yes. Yeah. So, but after Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu passed away, who was Umar's radiallahu anhu's uh, like support, supporter or like, you know, confidant? Excellent. Confidant was Ali Umar, Umar, radiallahu anhu. Because Umar was Ali, really Ali. tough. He was very tough and he was very decisive. He was black and white kind of guy. Kind of guy. So, yeah. So, so I'm just wondering... Bad, bad. But he told Ali, Ali, I need you. I need your advice. Mm. I really need your advice. So Ali was his watchman, counselor. You see. That's something the Shia hide. Do you know how much love between Ali and uh, Umar? I, do you know Ali has a son called Umar? Do you know that or not? Not from Fatima. Fatima, he had Hassan and Hussein. From the other wife. After the death of Fatima, he married. He named Aisha. His daughter was Aisha bin to Ali. Abu Bakr ibn Ali, Umar bin Ali. He loved them so much, he named his children on them. But they hide this from you. Because they talk only about Fatima. May Allah be pleased with that. Which is true, Hassan and Hussein. But from other wives, Ali married. Uh, other wives, not just uh, Fatima. After the death of Fatima, he married. And his first wife he married is called Ummul Banin. May Allah be pleased with her. Do you know she refused to spend the first night with him because his two sons, Hassan and Hussein, were feverish. She, she went and slept with Anna Yatim. Instead, of another woman. Takbir, <laughs> it's okay, love. It's my night. Yeah. I don't care. No, she said to Sayyidina Ali, see you. Later, the children, she went, Ali loved her even more, radiallahu, and because she took good care of his children. Many people don't know this. Okay, so it was Allah. Ali, radiallahu, who was advising Sayyidina Umar. May okay. Allah be pleased with him. Amen. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. First man, all the Sahaba. By the way, Umar, Umar did something nobody can do. You know what he did? He forbade the Sahaba to leave Medina without his permission. Because he didn't want to become caliph. They forced him. He said, then now no one leaves without my permission. Huh. You think you're going to put this responsibility on my shoulder and leave? No. Like, like you choose me to be your leader. I say, okay, with one condition. Nobody leaves without my permission. You cannot go to Syria or Yemen or even to Hajj and Umrah, you have to, uh, um, or Umar, can I, you have to inform him because he may need you for Shura. They were not dictators. They didn't like to be leaders because they were afraid of Allah. Sister, do you know Allah will ask every leader about how many, how many millions you have in Malaysia? 37 million people will be whoever is the leader. Did they eat well when they got sick? Did they study? Did you give them? He will ask him about the governors. The governors about uh, whoever is under them. Everyone. Pangurusi of a small kampong will be questioned. And you will be questioned about your husband's property and children. And the husband will be questioned about his wife and children. Mm. 
all of you are responsible. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Even the slave, even the maid, Allah will ask her, "Did you steal from your master, the master lady? Did you do good job or not?" Yes. Yalla, continue, my sister. Repeat, please. And no person can ever die except by Allah's grace and at an appointed time. Can you believe in this, please? No one will ever die without Allah's permission and without His time has come. Your time didn't come. That's why you didn't die. If your time comes, sorry, we can't. We can't stop even if you are in the best hospital surrounded by the greatest doctors. We can't. Your time has come. So please understand that. So Allah is preparing the Sahaba in case the Prophet dies. That he is also just like you. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Continue, please. And whoever desires to be one in this world, we shall seek him of it. And whoever desires to be one in the after, we shall be seeking thereof. And we shall be one in the future. Ha. You want dunya, Allah will give you. You want akhirah, Allah will give you. But who Allah will really appreciate? Those who thank him. Again, did you see Shakirin, Shakirin? 144 and 145? Yeah. And with the same word? Yeah. Or Amber Shukur? And you know very few people really do Shukur. Allah said it. وَقَلِيلٌ مِّنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ Allah says, very few of my slaves are grateful. Uh, one thing Allah praised Prophet Nuh with, he said, Innahu kana abdan shakura, in Surah Al-Isra. Nuh was real grateful man. Sisters, many of us are not grateful. Here, here is an example. Many of us complain, right? But do you know how many problems Allah saved you from? Three or four problems happened in your life. Do you know how many problems he saved you? So why don't we be grateful first before we even complain? Now well, you don't see that. You don't see that. Mm. Uh, this man was doing tawaf and raising his, dua, uh, his hand like this. Allahumma ja'alni min ibadika al-qaleel. Allah, oh Allah, make me among your slaves who are few. Umar ibn al-Khattab was making tawaf. He stopped him. He said, brother, what do you mean by this dua? He looked at, he was Bedouin, just new, new revert. He looked at him and he said, from a shakirin, from people who are per shukur. Umar got it. He said, everyone is more faqih than you, O Umar. Everyone is more faqih than you, O Umar. He's talking to himself. Then he realized. That this man is saying, oh Allah, make me among those who are grateful. Because they are very few. Allah says, Wa we will reward the, the grateful. Shaykh, how to be grateful to Allah? Number one, by tongue. Alhamdulillah, shukru lillah. And you, the Malays, mashallah, you used to say shukur, alhamdulillah. Now, only alhamdulillah. And now, even alhamdulillah, many of you slashed it. Fine. <laughs> even, yeah. Alhamdulillah. Dulla. Dolla. That's why you have dolla. That player. In my time, there was this player when I was young. He came to Malaysia. I was playing soccer. So there is dolla. Dolla. Dolla Saleh. Takbir. Huh. So what I am saying is this. Uh, through tank. The second thankfulness is through, through ibadah. By limbs, your limbs, ruku and sujood. And three, by sharing. Whatever Allah gave you, share. Gave you ilm, share. Gave you skills, share. Don't hide knowledge, sisters. Recipe of cooking, you give to a sister. So no secret recipe. Kentucky Fried Chicken, I don't want to give you the, what is this? Teach, teach. Teach, Allah will teach you more. Huh? 
knowledge, money, clothes, share, share. Okay. Very good. Sister Junaida. Very good, very good. Wait there, because another lengthy ayah. How many prophets Allah said? How many prophets? Banya, banya. Fought. They did jihad. It's not just Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. By the way, go to biblical prophets and see how many prophets in of Bani Israel. Jews and Christians, not the prophets are Muslims, but to the Christians and Jews, go see their culture of jihad. Okay, starting with, yalla, starting with who? Ibrahim, Ibrahim before the Jews and Christians. Okay, okay, come later, come later. Prophet before Ibrahim, no, Ibrahim leave him because he's not Jew, he's not Christian. After, after. After Musa, Musa fought, but the Jews didn't want to fight with him. He told them, let's fight. They, they, okay, he died. After him, Joshua, Yusha, Yusha bin Nun, alayhi salam. Then, before Isa, Isa didn't fight, before Isa. Dawood, David, who killed, who killed Goliath? Dawood, very good. Prophet Dawood called, killed Goliath. Killed him. Okay, very good. His son, Suleiman, was what? King. He fought many fights. We will see tonight, inshallah, in the class. Prophets, don't forget the class, nine o'clock. Very important class to, to see. Saul, Talut, Isaiah. Tonight, Prophet Isaiah. All Bani Israel prophets were fighters. Because Allah told them, fight for Allah's sake. Please understand that. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it's not just him. Jesus himself, as Sister Jeannie mentioned, there is an ayah in the Bible that says, Jeetukum be safe. I have come to you with the sword. That's the Bible. That's not the Quran. Yet the word sword is not mentioned in the Quran at all. The word jihad, yes. But the tool is not. But in the Bible, it's very clear. I have come to you with the sword. They hide that verse. It's there. As the Christians. Jesus, peace be upon him. And when he comes later, before the end of time, he will not accept jizya. He will not accept tax. Either you are Muslim or not. And he fight the non-Muslims, sword. Then the non-Muslims realized that the Prophet ﷺ was very, very nice because he gave them three options. You become Muslim, or you pay the tax, jizya, or uh, we fight you, choose. I give you either or. Ah, oh, Isa ibn Maryam will not take nonsense. Huh? Oh, this is why Allah kept him at the end. You think Muhammad's eyes was too much? Wait and see. Mm. That's why he will kill the Antichrist and all those who follow him. Isa ibn Maryam. Yeah. Yes, my sisters and brothers. When he comes, you will see. Even the Muslims will be like, wow, yes. Because he has to do what Allah tells him to do. Okay. So how many prophets fought and with them there were many rabbis, good people. Rabbi actually is a good word in Hebrew. It means a scholar, sheikh, alim. That's what it means, rabbi. Coming from the word ribbi, look at it. Ribbi is rabbi. Hebrew and Arabic are sisters. Actually, you cannot understand Hebrew without Arabic. Do you know that? 
to 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 learn Hebrew, you must learn Arabic first. So there is a, in Jerusalem there is university, Jewish university called uh, University of Jerusalem. If you go study Hebrew, they teach you Arabic first, because the root word must be in Arabic. Look at it, Arabi, Ibri. Same, it's just the ba before the ra. Arabi, Ibri. Hebrew, Arabiya, Ibriya. Mm. Uh. So there were many also good ulama and leaders with him, supporting him in his fight. How many prophets fought? Uh. And they never gave up, even when they were really tested. And they never became weak, nor did they uh, degrade themselves. Wallahu yuhibbu sabirin. Sisters, look at verse 142. It ends with what? 42, there, there. Very good. Verse 144. Shakirin. 145. 146. Sabirin, Shakirin, Shakirin, Sabirin. So you live between. Okay, did you see it? Yes. Did you see the ayah? Yes. Alhamdulillah. Earlier, what did I say? A mu'min lives between shukr and sabr. When things are going well, shukur. When things are going very bad, sabar. Same thing here, it is in front of you, in one ayah, in one page. Huh. And those who never do sabr or shukr, they are called. Look at it. Look at the first ayah in the same page. 141. 141. Look at 141. Kafirin. And 147. Kafirin. Kafirin, kafirin. Sabirin, sabirin. Shakirin, shakirin. Choose. And the last one. Meaning those who sabar and shukur, they are the, the muhsinin. They are not kafirun. Yeah, in front of you, in front of you. In one page. This is why I keep telling you, look at the ending. Sometimes just everything is in the end of the ayah. Kafirin. Sabirin. Shakirin. Shakirin. Sabirin. Kafirin. Muhsinin. Do you see that? Yes. Uh, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Yeah. Share with your loved ones. Okay. Page 68. Continue, sister Junaid. And it's made nothing, right? Allah. For he is our king and our transgression, and our sins too. And he is our king from you. And he is victory over the Excellent. And they said nothing but this prophets and his followers, the Rebiyun, the good ones, like the Sahaba, follow the Prophet Sallallahu Every prophet had some good followers. When they were fighting for Allah's sake, they turned to Allah with dua. Rabbana, ghfir lana dhunubana. First, always ask Allah maghfira. There is no victory without forgiveness. There is no success, neither in dunya nor in akhirah sisters, without Allah forgiving you. So the first dua is maghfira. And we have done so many wrong things, Ya Allah. Musrif, Mumbazir. In what? In sinning. We repeated the sins many times. Put our, our feet firm against the enemy. Give us victory over Oran Kafir. That is the dua of every prophet with his followers. What did Allah do to them? Hajja Farida. 148. Amen. I mean, may Allah make us amongst them. What did Allah do to them? He gave them the reward of the dunya, meaning victory, and the reward of akhirah, meaning jannah, and Allah loves those who do good. Remember, Allah loves us who do good. So you want Allah to love you? What do you do? Ya Allah, find some good today and go do it. Very easy. Continue. Continue. 
and you send this back on your screen. And you will turn back on uh, How many times I told you do not follow Oran Cafe? How many times? You think Sheikh Weber? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah, Quran up and down. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. There are ayah sisters, there are people still didn't even read yet, let alone do tafsir of it. Oh, you who believe, if you obey those who disbelieve, in any form or shape, in economy, in politics, in international law, in diplomacy, in education, in cultural exchange, if you, if you obey them, they will make you leave Islam. Wallahi al -Azim is true. Wallahi al -Azim is true. Obey them, listen to them, and you will see where, where you're going to end up. Listen to Muslims and obey Muslims. In الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا If you obey or kafir, like the Americans, like the British, like the French, I don't have to be very explicit. Like the Chinese in this country, like the Indians, non-Muslims. If you obey them, they will turn you, they will make you go back, meaning murtad. And then you become losers. Dunya and akhirah, your economy will fail because you listen to them. They're kafir, they eat babi. How can you listen to them? <laughs> Don't. Don't do that. Listen to them here means you obey their suggestions and their, they may give you a, a good idea. Wait a minute. People can present to you poison in honey. Be careful. And why we listen to them and don't listen to another? What's wrong with us? Ego, huh? Some people, they don't listen to one another when it comes to Islam and Muslims. Bring Oran Pute, non-Muslim. Even in economy, be careful. I just want to remind you how Britain occupied India. Bring the map of India versus Britain and see that control. Yes, you know what? Through one company, or East India Company. It started with companies. Be very careful. The new economy now, corporation are, are ruling the world. Be very careful, my sisters and brothers. Advise, advise politicians, huh? all of you. I'm not teaching you just so that you go home. By the time you get into your car, what, what was the surah, Sheikh Zubet Total? Like beer. Huh? Yalla, huh? 151. Hajja. Fatima. 150. 150, sorry. Yes. Akbir. 150, 151. Sorry. It's okay. Maula. Mm. Excellent. How can you take them as your protectors when Allah is your protector? Unless you are ashamed of Allah. Are you ashamed of Allah? No. Maybe. Some of you sometimes are ashamed of uh, you hide your husband. You don't want to say this is my husband. Go, go hide, go hide. <laughs> Na'udhu Billah. Some women, they don't want to say, this is my, my darling. She hides. Go, go, go disappear. Because maybe, I don't know, for one reason or another. Be careful, my sisters. Some Muslims, if you, if you truly believe Allah is your protector, you don't care about the world. But when you have that complex of inferiority, you, anyone, please come. 
كام هيلب مي تشان تو اياك نعبد واياك سو وات دو يو دو ذيس ايا اور يو وير فيكينج ات يو ار بلافينج يو ديدنت مين ات وين يو وير ريدينج ات سو وات اي ام سينج هير الله از سينج بل الله مولاكم يو دونت نيد ذيم بيكوز يو هاف الله يو هاف الله You don't need China. You don't need Russia. You don't need America. You don't need Britain. You don't need France. They themselves are in trouble. I swear by Allah, all of them are in trouble. They are in crisis. Sisters and brothers, they are really in crisis. You don't understand the world economy. Everything is based on riba. Do you know the country that has most the debt most in the world? United States. As I am speaking, the. The deficit is going by the billions, as I speak. You know, from the time I was uh, talking to now, few billions already added to the deficit because everything is based on riba. We might not have a lot of money, but it's like your car is your car. You, you know what I mean? Somebody looks very rich, but everything actually belongs to the bank. While you have my V, it's yours. Takbir, it's yours. You have five thousand ringgit. It's yours in the bank. Some people have; they are just paying. You have one ring, jewelry. Alhamdulillah, it's yours. Some people have to cannot pay. You see, America is number one country, billions, trillions, not billions. That day in two thousand. Before coming to America, from America, uh, there you can see it. By the way, it's on the internet. It goes tick, 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 tick. the Federal Reserve. It was I don't know how many trillion. Now, from the time I came to, don't, so don't think they are really in. Uh, that's why they need to go to war from time to time to lessen. Hmm. May Allah take them away from us. They always speak on Muslims. Mm, Iraq, Afghanistan, this, that. May Allah save us. So Allah says, I am your Mawla. How can you go and make them your Mawla, your protector, your helper? Unless you don't believe in Allah. Wallahu, and he is the best of helpers. Wa huwa khayru al-nasirin. Continue Hajjah Fatima. Yes. Mm. Very good, mashallah, alhamdulillah. Very good. I wish at that age I'd be able to read. Alhamdulillah, shukur. I am very bad. No, you are not very bad. You are very Fatima. You are very Fatima. Like bear. Mashallah, at this age, people come to class. Mashallah, may Allah bless. You know, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had Sahaba as older as Hajjah Fatima and Hajjah Farida, even and as young as small children, Sahaba, men and women. That's that's our deen. Yeah. Yeah. Inshallah, he will come. He will come. Okay. So Allah said, "Sanun qifi qulub al-ladina kafaru al-rab." Who said there is no terror in Islam? Here it is. Here is an ayah of terror. But Allah will terrorize Quran kafir. Look what He said: We shall cast terror into the hearts of those who disbelieve. If they want to fight you, we take care of the psychology. You just fight them. You do the physical jihad. We will terrify them. And I swear by Allah, I have seen soldiers like this being on themselves. You didn't see the Israelis. They ran. They said we don't go to Gaza. Why they didn't enter, enter Gaza? 
Gaza, do you know Gaza? How big Gaza is? Listen to me. Gaza is like from Tamantun to Kajang. And you have military, a bigger military, you can occupy the world. The, the Jews have, have so much weapon, cannot, cannot, because they don't have the heart. They don't have the heart. They said, no, we rather go to jail. Then we don't go. Because once they enter, bye-bye. Palestinian ladies will eat them with their teeth, let alone uh, uh, th those lions, our brothers, the Mujahideen, may Allah bless them. Young girls will, will I don't know whether we'll just throw anything at them. Hmm. So that's why they can't fight. They wet themselves. Allah said, I will cast terror in their hearts. Don't worry. Because they joined others in worship with Allah because of the shirk. So you see the aqibah of shirk? You are always scared. And that's why Muslims who do shirk, they are always takut. Bomo, a woman who always go to Bomo, a woman who always go to do sihr, she is always terrified. Anxiety. Why, sister, you have uh, anxiety? If you believe in Allah, you will not be, if you're strict tawhid, you will not be scared. You will not be scared. For which he had said no authority, their abode will be Jahannam wal billah, and how evil is the abode of Oran Zalim. So Oran Kafir are Oran Zalim. Remember that. Very good. Sister Salma. Ya Allah, the battle of uh, Uhud. The battle of Uhud, what happened? You were winning, Allah said. Remember Muslims, he's telling you and me, sometimes things are good, but while the good is coming, you disobey Allah. And I will show you what the Sahaba did, what type of sin they committed. It wasn't liquor, it wasn't riba, it wasn't zina, it wasn't shirk. They just came down from a hill. It's like I tell you, stay up. I tell my son, let's say he's upstairs. I say, stay there. Then I find him here. For that, for that, the Muslims lost the battle. That's all they did. So tama, tama. The Sahaba, tama for the booty of war. So Allah wanted to teach them a lesson. Even when the Prophet's still with them, they will be defeated to teach them. Don't do it again because the Prophet will die soon. And then you will be on your own. So if Allah protects you as long as the Prophet is with you, when he dies, who protects you? Yes, Sister Selma? Yeah, exactly. Allah himself. And disobeying the Prophet only in coming down. They didn't go flirting with women. They just came down to collect the booty. They thought we won. You see, don't think. In war, don't think. Follow orders. Oh, sisters, leadership is no joke. Yo, Allah, just to drive from Johor to here or from here to I don't know where. When a person tells you, be at 7, you don't understand. He has the map in his mind. He has been driving. He can sense this. He wants to arrive before certain time. While you are still looking at the mirror. Like me. Oh. La ilaha illallah. When we say we have half an hour, rest area. <laughs> With the ladies. <laughs> Again, always hide behind multitasking. We have half an hour. Go use the toilet. Pray. Eat something. Two hours, three hours. 
Then the traffic of KL coming back on a Saturday or Sunday, or I don't know what. <laughs> Takbir. Because you ladies, we just do like this and sleep. The driver. Uh, Oh, excuse me, I did a lot of driving. MashaAllah. You, you can drive and he sleeps. Very good. Takbir. MashaAllah. Very good. I like that. Yeah. Oh, what I'm saying, sisters, is uh, serious, serious. Uh, mothers understand when they are in leadership. When you tell your children, get in the car. Wait. And now you understand. Now you understand, because they oh they take their time. So what I'm saying, Rasulullah told them, stay, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, stay on this hill. You also it right when you went to Medina, I hope. Jabal Rumat, small hill. He told them, because he neutralized Khalid bin Walid. Khalid bin Walid had tanks, so that's artillery. If the tanks come, we shoot them. So the back of the Prophet the Sahaba who were winning was covered. I'm fighting, you are behind me. So I, I shouldn't worry about my back. You came down. My back now is open for anyone to come. Did you get it? Yeah. Ah. So, and Allah indeed fulfilled his promise to you, meaning victory. When you were killing them, Quraysh was defeated. With his permission, you were killing them by the permission of Allah. Until the moment you lost your courage. When did they lose their courage? Tama, sisters. The courage was as long as Tama, little dunya. They start seeing horses, you know, camels, swords, spears, helmets, you know, dunya. And fell to disputing about the order. Their leader told them, stay. The prophet said, don't. They, they didn't even listen to that emir like captain, captain who was in charge of them. And disobeyed after you showed, after, after he, Allah, showed you of the booty which you love. The moment Allah showed you little dunya, among you, among the Sahaba, are some that desire the world and some that desire the hereafter. Sisters and brothers, this ayah is for who? Sahaba, Allah still told them, some of you want dunya. How about us? If the Sahaba who were studying under Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he told them, still some of you want the dunya. Ya Allah, how about us? <laughs> then he made you flee from them, from your enemy. After being killing them, now you are being killed. That he might test you. You see why he flipped it? He's testing you. All these tests. But you brought it on yourself by disobeying the Prophet. But surely Allah forgave you, alhamdulillah, and Allah is most gracious to the believers. It's like you want, sisters, to make a point to your son who disobeyed you. Before you forgive him, you want him to, to, to learn the lesson. Before you say, I forgive you, my son, teach him a lesson so that he doesn't do it again. You got it? Sometimes it's, you, you delay to say, I forgive you, just for him to go through that uh, pain, that bitterness, yeah, so that he doesn't do it again. Yeah, serious. The prophet almost was killed because somebody didn't do his job. Somebody, Tama, Dunya, we won like better. Calm down. No, not yet, until the prophet says so. Come see today what Muslims are doing, right and left, east and west. May Allah bless you. Yalla, since we have three more sisters and less time, can I give you one ayah each? Very good. Yalla, Sister Julia. Takbir. <laughs> no, Julia, because I haven't seen for ages. Julia, okay. Takbir. Now Isa also. Now Isa, I will never forget her face and her children. MashaAllah. Yeah. But uh, name sisters, if I don't see you for some time, sorry. If I call you grandma or auntie. 
Yalla, sister Joy. Ah, oh, no, no, to be fair to... Sorry, Salma. To be fair, especially for student. Read the second one. Then one one. No, fair, fair. Yeah. And remember when you ran away dreadfully without even casting a side glass at anyone, and the messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi was in the rear calling you back. Rare, rear, both correct. La ilaha illallah. One is British, one is American. <laughs> serious, serious. That day, I don't know. I was telling somebody civilization. He said civilization. I said civilization. Then I said, okay. One is American, one is British. Then he realized. It's true, it's true. Some say civilization. Some say civilization. Some say rare. Somebody said rear. Okay. Palas. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> what is manta? Not go and cook. Oh, oh in, uh, in English. Yeah, yeah, but uh, you know, in French, even another way. Rare, 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 seldom. If you say rare, rare in French, it's like seldom. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. No, we're going to dispute like the Sahaba in Badr. You know that. Okay. Dad, if Allah gives you one respect after another by way of a little to teach you not to grieve for that which had escaped you, nor for what which had befallen you. And Allah is well aware of all that you do. Allahu Akbar. Do you see? Allah tested them so that he said what? He will reward you for the hardship you went through and to teach you a lesson. The reason why Allah tested them in, in Uhud to show them that even if the prophet is alive, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, still you are not immune to be de defeated if you disobey Allah or his messenger. Sisters, we are disobeying Allah. This is why we cannot win against the Oran Kafir. Because we disobey. We need to go back to Allah. Not just Salat and Siyan, Mu'amalat. Look at us in Mu'amalat. What is this? So Allah said, and remember when you run away dreadfully without even casting a side glance at anyone, you were just running because they panicked. And the messenger Muhammad was Yad'ukum, he calling you back to come fight. Huh? And you just ran away. There did Allah give you one distress after another by way of requital so that he teach you a lesson. Why that happened? Why Allah allowed defeat? To teach you a lesson so that you don't do it again. Very important, sisters. Very, very important story of Uhud. Huh? They were winning. Again, like better. But this time, hurry. You know, like that fruit is really there, but it's not ripe yet. Why you want to remove it now? Not yet. There is a time. Don't pass it and don't plug it before time. You were in a hurry. So it's still sour and will be sour. You should have waited for another one day or two. So that is how timing is very important. There did Allah give you one distress after another in way of requital to teach you not to grieve for what Allah uh, what for what you missed it wasn't yours nor for that something was wasn't your uh, qada and qadar because you wanted you want you wanted the booties the prophet would have given you just wait no put some cookies in front of children and tell them don't touch you go come back to what we are missing some don't touch, but one or two, the rest tempted. Like that dunya. And Allah is well aware of all that you do. So Alhamdulillah, the Sahaba never did that mistake again. They learned the lesson. 
Yeah, Omar bin al-Khattab, how he was looking at them. You know what I mean? Like, because Omar cannot tahan the nonsense. Masha'Allah, Sister Julia. Long ayah, Masha'Allah. Very good. You see this ayahs is all about subhanallah, test, test, test. Okay. Then after the distress, after the defeat of Uhud, what did Allah put on the Sahaba? Sleep, slumber. You know, sometimes sisters, it's better when you are upset, go sleep. Wallahi al-adim. And I know some people, when they are upset, they just fall asleep. That is rahmah. You know, you shut down. Because if you don't shut down, <laughs> somebody will shut down. You better go sleep when you are upset, especially when you're really angry. So they were like, they were so malu. Where do they put their faces from the Prophet Because one thing about the Sahaba, they couldn't hide when, when they make mistake, like Rasulullah, just his look. When he looks at... You know, if he looks, just look at you. He has a look, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You melt. Like, what is this? He doesn't even tell you what is this. He has that way of punishing you in, with Rahmah. But like, brother, what is this? Like Aisha said, radiallahu anha. If the food is salty, he just leaves. And we are so... What is that word? Regretful, more than if he made a comment or shouted. He doesn't shout, he doesn't yell, he doesn't even make a comment. He doesn't eat. He just leaves to the masjid. Then they feel bad. Like, oh my God, I didn't pay that. Where was my mind when I was cooking? Multitasking. Takbir. <laughs> okay. A group of you went to sleep. Another group, subhanallah, were thinking, they were so under stress that they couldn't sleep. They were thinking, what should we do? What, how should we tell the Prophet? Please forgive us, O Messenger of Allah. It was our mistake. Huh? Yeah, they didn't lie. Mistake. Come on. While another party was thinking about themselves as how to save their own selves, ignoring the others and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Trying to what? To do what? To ignore cannot, to, to say what? You know, it's a bad situation. And thought wrongly of Allah. Who are they? Who thought wrongly of Allah? Hypocrites, may Allah curse them. They left. So now what to tell the prophet? That they were winning. You see the hypocrites we say, didn't we tell you? If things goes the, their way, they tell you, didn't we tell you? But if things went not their way, they will just hide. They go to the Bedouin, to Kampong. They hide and then they come back after a few days. That's the hypocrisy. They said, have, ha, have we any part in the affair? We have nothing to do with this. Allah says to the Prophet Sallallahu indeed the affair belongs wholly to Allah. You have nothing to do. Yes, you're right. Everything belongs to Allah. But not the way you mean it. 
You know what I mean? So when something bad happens to you and somebody says, I have nothing to do with it, agree with him. Say yes. Yes. Alhamdulillah, everything is in the hand of Allah. Tell them that. Because they think they want to get to you by saying, you see, I have nothing to do with it. Say, Alhamdulillah, you have nothing to do with it. Yeah, everything is in the hands of Allah. You know, some people, they use that to hurt you. They use that to hurt you. If we had anything to do with the affair, none of us would have been killed here. You see what they say? They say, you see why we were not killed? Because we went back to Medina. You were killed because you fought. We told you don't fight. That's what the hypocrites said to the Prophet Sallallahu But they were winning. It's the, those Muslims who came down. Because of the Muslims, we were winning like better. Ah, so set the record right. Sisters, very important. Yallaha, sister Intan. Very good. Are these hypocrites or Sahaba? These are Sahaba. Some Sahaba, when the when Khalid bin al Walid radiallahu anhu, who was not a Muslim then, came and start chopping the heads of the Sahaba because sandwich. Sisters, imagine I'm running after you. Your husband comes behind me. So you and your husband now. Just a form of saying. Some Sahaba start running away because the death, you know, it's not easy. From winning to losing, they, Allah said these are, these are most good Muslims, but they takot. And Allah has forgiven them. They should not have done that by running away. They should have fought till the end and follow the command of the Prophet Is this clear? So those of you who turn back on the day the two hosts met, it was shaitan who caused them to do that. The shaitan caused them to run away. Allah has forgiven them. They shouldn't do that again. Alhamdulillah. 156, Sister Ilahi. Very good. All you who believe, don't be like those who say, who are they the hypocrites? Whenever some Sahaba go for business to Yemen or to Syria and something bad happens like death or sickness, or they go to jihad, they say, you see, if they stayed with us in Medina, nothing happens to them. Did you see some Muslims like this? I know. Oh, if, if he kept his mouth shut, Nothing will happen to him. Ah. When something is written, whether you keep your mouth shut or not, it's coming to you. So you better at least speak your mind. I am just giving you an example of this dunya. All you who believe, don't be like those who look at it, disbelief. Allah called them kafir. Although they were pretending to be Muslims. And they said to their brethren who went for business, Darabu fil Ard means went for business. They went to Ghazwa, to a battlefield. If they stayed with us, they wouldn't have been 
they wouldn't die, they wouldn't be killed. Allah said, لِيَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ ذَلِكَ حَسْرَةً فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ Actually, Allah is making that as a cause of regret in their heart. Actually, they're regretting they were not with them. You know, sometimes people out of regret, they start, um, what do you call it, uh, justifying. But actually, they really want to be with you. But they can't because they, they, they don't have good hearts. They can't. They can't. Simply, they can't. Wallahu ah. Wallahu yuhi wa yumit. It is Allah who gives life and it's Allah who gives death. Okay, how about you die in Medina? You stay, you didn't go, neither to business nor to jihad, and you die. So? You are going to do something good and I don't join you. And then one of you dies. So I start saying, you see, I told them don't go. Don't go to Cameron Highland. The car, uh, dug, dug, dug. okay, you staying here, dug, 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 dug. from dug, 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 dug. and they are just minor injuries while you are uh, you, you faham or not? May Allah bless you, reward you. Yalla, there is one ayah left, 157. Sister Nazaria, one ayah, khalas, one ayah, 157. And then we end the page to top. Yalla, Sister Nazaria, go ahead. Yes. Assalamu alaikum, Chief. Wa alaikum, salam wa rahmatullah. Okay, um, I'm um, If you are killed in the course of Allah or die, then forgiveness from Allah and mercy are better than whatever they accumulate in this world. Very good. And if you are killed or die in the way of Allah, that's the best death. Look at me. If you are killed or die for the sake of Allah, sometimes the enemy kills you. Sometimes no. You went to do business, you died. Do you know any person who goes to do business and dies? He died for Allah's sake. If the business is halal and if he wants to do sadaqah and zakat, like uh, good uh, brothers and sisters who travel, do business, they die. Worker, he's working, uh, painting, oh, been, he falls. This man, uh, Shaheed, inshallah. Bangladesh, he comes to work here, doesn't go back. Falls, something happened. Your husband, fisherman, he goes, he doesn't come back. Mermaid takes, takes him. <laughs> like there. <laughs> Like bear, at least she sings for him. Ding dong, ding dong. Like bear. Anyways, somebody works for Allah's sake. He is feeding his family halal, sending them to school. Mashallah, pay his zakat, his sadaqa. This is also death in Allah Taala. Yeah, you think what traveling those days, especially those days, camel, sisters from Medina to to Syria, to Palestine. I challenge you if you walk only from, from some of you mall to the parking lot, Takmir. Okay, no need to say more. And if you are killed or die in the way of Allah, forgiveness and mercy from Allah are far better than all the wealth they are collecting. You know, some people don't want to fight because they want their wealth, they want to stay near their properties and their families. Allah says there is something better, to die shaheed or to die, mashallah, traveling. May Allah bless me and you, forgive me and you, and grant us Jannatul Firdaus. Thank you, my sisters and brothers, for being patient, and for me for being very patient too. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fil akhirati hasana, wa qina adhab nar. Ya Allah bless all hadirin and hadirat, zoom in and zoom out. Grant them Jannatul Firdaus. Here, grant Shifa to those who are sick. Ya Allah, guide our youth. Ya Allah, beautify our daughters with Haya, the way you beautified Maryam. And beautify our sons with Haya, the way you beautified Yusuf. Alayhi salam. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, fi al-akhirati hasana, wa qina alam nar. Assalamu alaykum.